Okay, so now uh, I'll show you the new Kubernetes ingress controller for Kong, and uh, we can see a demo of it running. So why, why is this important? Well, you know why this is important. This is important because Kubernetes could be uh, the future of infrastructure. Uh, it's a great orchestration tool for containers, for Docker containers. And this whole Docker and Kubernetes revolution really have changed the landscape on how we build, monitor, deploy, orchestrate our apps. Think of this. This is the CNCF landscape. Most of these logos here are logos that, of products that have been created after Docker was released, after containers became popular, and after Kubernetes also became popular. Containers, Kubernetes, they forced us to rethink how we do the things that we used to do in the previous generation, in the previous gen of um, our apps. Um, think of, you know, again, monitoring, logging, tracing, and all of this tooling right now today, it's doing it specifically for Kubernetes, specifically for containers. It's effectively a revolution. Um, a revolution which, by the way, I, I would like to add, was led by open source. If you think about open source as a keyword, even in the enterprise, open source has never been adopted as much as today, everywhere, in any sort of organization, including governments. If you look at 10 years ago, we used to have some open source tooling, but all the mission critical stuff was primarily uh, private, uh, closed source. And now with Docker, open source, Kubernetes, open source, tracing solutions like open tracing, uh, Zipkin, open source, even Kong, open source. Open source is becoming the keyword to this revolution effectively. And the reason is developers are pushing this, this change. Um, you know, 10 years ago, most of these things were sold or pushed down the throat of developers from a top-down perspective. Vendors were pushing the narrative. But now with Docker, with containers, with Kubernetes and all of these technologies, developers, it's bottom up, developers are adopting these tools and are putting them in production. This is a great uh, cultural shift. It's not just a technological shift, it's a cultural shift that we're witnessing today. And new patterns are emerging. Uh, Docker, Kubernetes, Prometheus for monitoring, Google RPC for making our microservices communicate with each other. Open tracing, for example, to trace all of those requests, to understanding all of these service-to-service -service communication, how, how it's happening, and you know, who's consuming what, what is the dependency tree between all of these different APIs. So because we want to play very nicely with this new ecosystem, um, we released the Kubernetes Ingress Controller. So you could run the, uh, Kong in Kubernetes by using the official Docker image, but this controller, it's um, implementing the ingress spec by Kubernetes. So first of all, it's open source. You can find it at that link, uh, github.com slash Kong slash Kubernetes ingress controller. And it's built on top of the, um, of the Nginx ingress controller, which is very popular for Nginx as well. So Kong is built on top of Nginx, so we did not reinvent the wheel. We took what was already existing there, and we adapted it to run Kong on top of it. As a matter of fact, the same person who built the Nginx ingress controller is the same person who also built the Kong ingress controller. The way it works, it's extremely straightforward. The ingress controller will listen to every Kubernetes event and it will react to those events that, he, uh, that have been specified into the uh, Kubernetes declarative config and it will automatically configure and add or remove target pods from the Kong uh, upstream and target data model, right? So what you do, we're gonna see it running in a, in a few seconds. Effectively, what we're gonna do is specifying our, our, our routes and then the ingress controller will take it from there and we don't have to worry about it. Now, one thing it's very important to realize about this is that this only works with the latest Kong release, 0 0.13. It does not work with versions of Kong prior to 0 0.13. And the reason is 0.13 introduced services and routes, which Thibault extensively 
covered in the previous talk. And these entities are required to the ingress, for the ingress controller to actually effectively work. Before, with APIs, uh, with the API, with the old API object, we were limited in the way we could set up rules. And now with services and routes, we don't have those limitations anymore. Therefore, the ingress controller has been unlocked. To recap for you what routes and services and upstreams and targets do, I did this, uh, I created this slide, this slide here. Routes determine the, effectively the ingress point uh, to Kong, right? You define your ingress rules, and if the ingress rule does not exist, and you're making a request that, or, that, or you make a request that does not match any, any ingress rule, that's a 404 for Kong. Otherwise, Kong will associate that route to a service, and then on the egress side of Kong, we have upstreams and targets, Kong will need to find out where to proxy that request. And the targets effectively contain the final IP address of our pods. So what this Kubernetes ingress controller is doing, so first of all, you, run, you execute it, you run it, uh, you will see the ingress uh, and Kong pods running in there. In my example, I'm going to use Postgres, but nothing prevents you from using Cassandra. Again, it can be either Cassandra or Postgres, either or, you can choose. And, um, and when it does that, it will parse the configuration, which looks a lot like this, in order to configure those routes and those upstream targets. This is your typical Kubernetes configuration. So what we're doing here, we are specifying uh, a rule. It's an ingress rule with um, a specific spec, uh, which effectively points the foo.bar host to a service whose name is http-svc uh, in my demo. So this will be a route in Kong, and Kong will automatically then parse from Kubernetes events all the pods IP addresses that belong to the service and add them as a target to that specific upstream. Of course, you can also apply plugins on top of this. And you can do that, again, in a declarative configuration with Kubernetes. You have, uh, and by the way, the, the, the repository on GitHub has many more of these um, extensions. But for example, you have a Kong plugin extension, which allows you, for example, in this case, to add a, any plugin on top of that specific rule, uh, rule. And so in this case, you can add a rate limiting plugin to protect and secure this service with Kong. Kong, usually it's being configured via an admin API, but in this case, this is very different. This is a declarative configuration to specify what Kong should do, right? And it just follows the Kubernetes configuration spec. So effectively, by creating that rule, we're creating implicitly a route and a service within Kong, but you don't have to worry about it. The ingress controller that does, does that for you. And then when we scale our deployment, our service, Kong will automatically listen to those Kubernetes events and then create the right targets, which are being added automatically into the Kong cluster. You can create Kong plugins, you can create hell checks, you can create circuit breakers, you can create in a declarative fashion pretty much any entity that Kong allows today. So let's see the demo. So by the way, the demo is something that you can easily run as well uh, on your computer, on your laptop. You can just go to the repo. Uh, it's a Kong Kubernetes Ingress Controller. And within this repo, there is a folder called Deploy. If you click here, um, there is a minikube.md file which allows you to easily replicate what I'm doing today on your computer. So let's do it today. Uh, I have currently Minikube running, and I have an empty Kubernetes cluster. There's literally nothing in here. Um, you can also see from the dashboard, uh, there is the default namespace um, and pretty much nothing else. So what I'm going to do is to, cre to create some resources in here from this file, all in one Postgres. So let's, let's see what this is. So first of all, let me... Um, let me create this uh, from this file. And if I do this, we're seeing that we're creating a new Kong namespace, 
we are creating some custom resource definitions in order for us to configure those Kong entities from a Kubernetes configuration file. So the Kong plugins, Kong consumers, credentials, and so on and so forth. Uh, I'm starting Postgres and, uh, and I'm starting, you know, the most important things, of course, I'm starting a Kong ingress controller um, and a Kong deployment. So this is the default namespace, but if I specify the Kong namespace, we're seeing that the containers are being created. Now, this might take a few seconds because I started from an empty Kubernetes cluster. And now what is, this is doing right now is pulling that Kong container from the, the Docker hub, the Docker store. So eventually, we're going to have all of them running. And it seems like we, we got them running now. If I go on the dashboard here, we can see exactly what's happening. There is a new namespace, it's called Kong. From here, I can go on pods, and I can see all these pods running. This is that specific file that I've uh, just created on, uh, using the kubectl command. So now, to make my life a lot easier, I'm going to create some environment variables that allow me to retrieve the IP address and port of my Kong instance running on Kubernetes right now. So I'm just gonna export a bunch of properties here, which would allow me to, to parse all this information. As a matter of fact, um, I can now echo the Kong admin IP and the Kong admin port. And if I go here, I should be looking at the admin API of Kong running within my Kubernetes cluster. If I type slash services, it's an empty cluster. Kong doesn't have any kind of data in there. We didn't configure any service right now, so it's empty. Uh, and if I go on slash upstreams, we're seeing that there are no upstreams configured. So what I'm going to do now, it's I'm going to create a a simple hello world app within that Kubernetes cluster. And that app, that service, will become my upstream service that Kong will send in front, that the ingress controller will try to proxy to, right? So this is a simple, um, a simple app. So let's, let's go ahead and provision it with uh, Kubernetes. It's in the manifests dummy app file. I do this, I mean, we can also, you know, we can also check this out. <coughs> uh, this is just a simple app. Uh, it's a simple service. And this service, that's something that's very, very simple. Um, the service will, when it's being consumed, it will just return information about, about the request and about the cluster. So let's, <coughs> let's try to, to consume, uh, to consume this service. But in order to consume the service, let's create the ingress rule first so that we can consume it via Kong. So the ingress rule, it's very simple. I'm creating a, an, an, an ingress object um, that's trying to match any request made to foo.bar to that specific service I've created. So if I, if I get, if I list the pods, we can see that we have uh, our pod running here and uh, we can see our deployment, HTTP-SVC. So what I'm trying to say here is every request on Kong that matches this host name needs to be redirected here. So let's go ahead and do this. I've got my ingress rule created and I just killed my terminal. So I'm sorry, I need to recreate this now. <laughs> okay. If I go here and I type slash services now, we see that the ingress controller by default has parsed that Kubernetes event and created the service within the Kong cluster. So this has been created not because I was consuming Kong and telling Kong, hey, create this service. This has been created because the ingress controller was listening to those Kubernetes logs and then created the service. So it's not something you have to do manually anymore. As long as you configure your Kubernetes ingress, then con the controller will take it from there. 
And also, I did it, it did create an upstream object. This upstream object has a name. Um, the name is here. And this upstream obje object also has a few, uh, one target, because I only have one replica of my uh, HTTP SVC deployment, and the target points to the pod's IP address. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and consume this service. So let's retrieve, let's retrieve the Kong proxy IP. All right. So let's consume this and then the proxy port and this is the proxy port which by the way is here so if i if i just make a dumb request with no host specified to this address kong does not know that i'm trying to consume food.bar and so he will complain that it cannot match any service with this but if i do set the food.bar host now kong will match that route and it will understand that I'm trying to consume that specific service. So when this happens, this is the upstream service returning the response. Go, so what I'm doing here is sending a request to the ingress controller. The ingress controller will execute the, that ingress rule and then it will proxy the request to the upstream service. <clears throat> now, the interesting about this is that we can we can scale that service and Kong will automatically again parse those Kubernetes logs and then add the new pods to the list of targets for that service. So the list of targets, right now we only have one target, uh, which is the original one. So if I go ahead and, and scale that, that deployment with more replicas, now Kong should add, for each one of, that, of those replicas, it should add a new target in the upstream. <clears throat> so um, let's go ahead with that. We have scaled our, our, our service. And as a matter of fact, we see we have way more pods now. We have five pods. And eventually Kong will add all of them here. And now we have five. So when we make that request to Kong, now Kong will, you know, will, will proxy them across each one of those services. Now you can take it from there. You can apply plugins on top of it. You can create new services. You can scale them up and down horizontally. And you don't have to touch the admin configuration for Kong. Kong will be configured via the declarative Kubernetes config. This is the first release. So although I'm very excited to demo it today, make, you know, be aware that it might have some problems. So use it in staging first and please let us know if you have any problem. Just open up an issue, we're gonna answer to it and then fix it. With that said, we do have um, a roadmap for this. So first of all, it's going to be soon um, officially announced in our Kubernetes distribution on the website. And, um, and uh, if, if we look at the ingress, uh, I'm sorry, if we look at the, um, um, if you look at the readme.md file of the repo, you will be able to learn, you know, you know, how to apply, for example, Nginx annotations on top of this and how to, for example, create consumers in a declarative way, how to set credentials in a declarative way, and how to make a sense of all of this with the services you're trying to, to apply on top of Khan. <clears throat> so this is the roadmap. It's, it's public. Um, we want to make a few optimizations to the ingress. Um, one of them, and one of the most important ones, is to use tags in the resources we are creating with Kong. You, can, you might be using the ingress to automatically create and add those services on top of the, of the Kong cluster, but you might also decide to use that Kong instance to manually add services to that Kong cluster. So today, the ingress controller makes the assumption that every entity it creates 
as being created in an automatic way. So if you delete some of these entities from your declarative config, Kong will purge your services configuration. We want to fix this problem by introducing tags, which would allow the ingress controller to only delete the entities automatically created by the ingress controller and not delete any other entity you might have created outside of the ingress controller in a, in a manual way. Um, after we released it, I think this is a good success factor for, there was uh, some interest, uh, we didn't announce it yet, but some people found about it and start opening issues, which I think it's a good thing, it's a positive thing. So keep opening up issues, keep them coming, and we're gonna fix them on the way. Now, this is very simple, right? This is just your typical Kubernetes ingress controller. Now, coming next, we're going, as part of our roadmap, we're going to figure out how, can Kong, how, we, how we can make Kong play nicely with everything else that's happening in the Kubernetes ecosystem. Specifically, service mesh and microservices and Istio. Now, there is a big problem with Istio today. Istio is trying to mix and match different use cases into one control plane. So, um, Istio is a control plane. It supports different implement data plane implementations. It supports Envoy. I can support Linkerd, it can also support Kong, it does support Nginx, for example. Problem is, Istio as a control plane, it's very focused on internal east-west service-to-service communication and does not really handle well with the ingress use case, which is a completely different use case with different policies rather than just east-west service-to-service. So what we need to figure out is, can Istio easily support more and more policies that make more sense on an ingress use case and not just on a service-to-service -service, uh, uh, you know, uh, deployment? Or should we release our own control plane to be used alongside Istio together? But that doesn't really sound too nice to me. So we'll, we'll have to wait and see how the Istio project matures and evolves. In the meanwhile, we're going to move along with our own control plane until we wait for Istio to better support that specific ingress use case. With that said, most of these things uh, will be talked about, discussed, and announced in a Kong User Summit. So this is a two-day conference in September uh, 18th and 19th, 2018, in here in San Francisco. It's a two days event where people from the community enterprise customers, people from the industry will be coming and talking about how all of this ecosystem is changing and what are these waves that we're seeing in the market. It's going to be um, a summit where everybody's welcome to join. Um, you can go on kongechq.com slash summit to learn more about it. And it's primarily gonna be made of two different tracks. There's going to be a user track about Kong and there's going to be an industry track about microservices, Kubernetes, Service Mesh, and Serverless. Speaking of Service Mesh, next week we do have a webinar about Service Mesh. Um, I do not have a slide about that, I just, I just reminded myself about it. So you can go on the website or you can go on our Twitter and find the link to that webinar. We're gonna talk about Service Mesh if you wanna learn more about it. Of course, we're also hiring. Uh, we are growing very fast. Um, primarily in San Francisco, but really all over the world, um, in pretty much every position, every role, engineering role, you know, Kubernetes role, sales even, customer success, literally anything, right? So if you're interested or you know anybody who might be interested, please let us know.